Welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, we hear from a representative from the Pennsylvania State Education Association on the status of education in the state. Plus, since 2008, nearly 205 Pennsylvania children, if not more, have died or nearly died from child abuse. We're going to hear from an expert on, on child abuse, what to do about it. All of that follows these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Welcome back to the program. Well, before we get to the important topic of education, school funding, what to do about a formula, should it, what kind of formula should exist in order to give money out to the school district, uh, Kathleen Palm is here. She's the founder of the Center for Ch Children's Justice. She's been spending a lot of time on, on child abuse. Uh, there's a, either, <laughs> Catherine, first of all, thanks for coming on, Kathleen. Thank you. Appreciate having you. Either there's an epidemic of it now or for years it didn't go reported. My sense is maybe a little of both, but maybe more the latter, that this happened over the years, decades and decades, and it just pushed aside and, you know, okay. Well, I think, you know, there is research to show that we've seen some decline um, of child sexual abuse, child abuse overall. Right. But we are seeing increased in terms of school reporting, child deaths and things like that. And part of that is that you're seeing an increase in fatality. So even though child abuse overall may be going down, lethal child abuse wow. or near lethal is going up. Um, and also we are seeing just a greater understanding of what child yeah. maltreatment is and why people should report and let an investigation yeah. happen. I mean, that's, that's a great point. I mean, one of the things that you have to think about is over decades, you know, go back 40 or 50 years ago, you had to know it was going on and it was okay. You know, nobody reported it. And the kids who were abused, you know, if they were 10, 11, 12, might have said something, let it go. But now... Every day you pick up a newspaper, you watch a clip on TV, and there's something in the news about it. Right. So the news media is much more sensitive to it. Well, I think we have a greater consciousness of understanding what child maltreatment is and child abuse is. And while we're still one, you talked, we talked about it earlier, the balancing act that you, how far do you intrude in a family's mm -hmm. life or into your neighbor's business? I think we better have a sense of there's a line. And when we see that line, we don't, we want po people to speak up. And so I think overall, the community just has a greater consciousness, not as much as we need yet, yeah. but a greater understanding of it. Yeah. As you, as you point out, there've been some pretty important changes in Pennsylvania law that relate to that. Highlight a few of them. Well, first of all, you know, you, you do polling, you know that very rarely do people have positive feelings about lawmakers. This is one area we can have some positive feedback. That's a good thing. Go yeah, it is, it is, you know, and the fact is that we've seen in the last year, um, since about this time last year, we've had 20 plus new laws signed in um, to effect. Part of that goes to show you the sheer volume of it, shows you how out of whack and out of sync Pennsylvania had been for too long. But the other part of it is a real strong bipartisan response to scandals like the Archdiocese of Philadelphia and the Penn State, Jerry Sandusky scandal. Probably one of the things that will speak most to people understanding is the changes in mandatory reporting. So previously, someone would report, mm -hmm. and if you were my supervisor, I'd come to you and say, look, Terry, here's what I think is happening. And then you would decide whether a report would be made or not to outside authorities. We now got rid of chain of command reporting. We often use the example of think Joe Paterno. He gets a report from someone. He wouldn't knock it up the chain of command now. Instead, he would dial mm -hmm. and call the state's child abuse reporting mm -hmm. hotline or law enforcement. Yeah gives a lot less opportunity for reports to be missed, for trauma, for right. kids to happen is, and, and stuff. Is that in the law now? You're telling me that's now in Pennsylvania law. When We're going to run to a break. When we come back, I want to get, I, I want to help people understand if they suspect it. I mean, as you know, and we were talking about this before we started, you, you, you think something's going on. You go, well, what do I do about it? Right. You know, it could be a neighbor, could be a coworker. Do you Go. To, how, how do you handle it? If you're wrong, do you want to, you know, nobody wants to do that. On the other hand, we want to protect children. We're under a break. I'll okay. ask Kathleen when we come back about that important issue, how to handle it. We'll do that when we return. Good. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business.
This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Thank you. We're giving you an update on, uh, on uh, child abuse, uh, legal changes, what people should do when they think uh, there's a case of child abuse going on. It's a tough issue. Kathy Palm is here uh, from the Ch Center for uh, Children's Justice. She's uh, one of the, the uh, experts in the state who's been following it, pushing it for legislative reform. All right. Yeah, let's say you're not. So if you're on the job, and, and you hear or you think or you find something, you're on a job, what do you do about it? Well, first of all, the standard for reporting is reasonable cause to suspect. So it's not believe, you don't have to absolutely, that's what the job of an investigator is. You should pick up the phone and you should call Childline or soon in the beginning of the year, you can do it electronically on by email. And it's 1-800-932-0313. It is hard, there is a balancing act, but if you have a reason to suspect, mm -hmm. if you see something, you know, a child in, in sexual cases, a child is really um, afraid of touch or backing off, or you see children with bruises, kids bruise, hey, I have little people, they bruise oh. a lot. But if you see a child under one with bruising on the ear or the face, kid, one of the standards we always say, and because these are the kids who die most often as very young children, if a child's not bru cruising, they shouldn't <clears throat> be bruising. So there's all sorts of ways for people to look at, and there's tons of resources. I would look for people to look online. DPW's about to launch a site, um, WW Keep um, Kids Safe. And hopefully people will get some of the background information they know to know what to look for. But if you do suspect that a child's being abused, you don't have to be absolutely certain. Call the line. Yeah. That's what law enforcement, that's what children youth so is for. So let me get this straight. So let, if you're in a work and it's a workplace situation, you would handle it the same way if it's a neighbor, you would call the child. Is that exactly. your, so you right. don't get into this. Well, the, no, the, di the only difference is that if I'm in the workplace and I'm working with children, so I'm a teacher, I'm a well, child care provider, I have the legal obligation to do it. If I'm the neighbor, if okay. I, I have a That's a great a permissive, distinction. I'm, right. gl I'm glad you're pointing right. that out. And that's because we expect that there's a level of training. And the other thing is one of the laws is that there has to now be training. We've for long required people to legally report child abuse, but we never had a requirement that they be trained. Going forward, school professionals, child care professionals, those licensed by the state, like doctors and nurses, they'll have to engage in at least three hours of training every yeah. five years. All right, moving forward, what do you uh, what, what 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 do you think the next step is? Uh, I, I I noticed that in the course of the last uh, six months or so, you had been communicating with the campaigns of both Governor Corbett and and Governor Elect Wolf about questions that you had, if you were to go into the next session of the General Assembly, which will begin in January, what would you want lawmakers and the governor to look for? Well, I think the first thing is leadership. Um, Pennsylvania children were allowed to languish in really desperate situations in terms of child sexual abuse and child physical abuse for decades in this state. And if not for Jerry Sandusky's arrest and more of a crystallization of people understanding the problem, we probably wouldn't have changed the laws. And so we need leadership. We need Governor-elect Wolf and the legislature to not look at child protection as a once and done, every 10 years we're gonna do it, but this is a consistent thing. Mm -hmm. The major thing I think that I would say that hasn't changed in Pennsylvania is that we still have the same structure in place. That if you have a problem, you're the parent who feels that you've been falsely accused, you're a child who you've been trying to get services and you can't, there's nowhere to go to independently kind of to have that intermediary party, party. And so it's really important that we get to some level of accountability and transparency in Pennsylvania. That's hard. This is a tough state sometimes on transparency and accountability. And yet this is a very significant issue for kids. And it's a very significant budget item. And you're going to talk about education. The, the ripple effect of the effects of child abuse in our school system has an effect be, on learning. Absolutely. Yeah, I would absolutely. think so. I would think so. So are, are, are there is there legislation to that effect or do you think you've got most of what you want to get done and now it's creating uh, I, I don't I, I don't want to say an office in state government that coordinates that right. because people will go oh here we go another office but there has to be some mechanism doesn't right. there, there that, does. that, that there's coordination of this maybe through some agency of government 
that now exists. There was one of the recommendations from the task force on child protection that didn't get realized. So there does need to be a mechanism. We all get nervous about another layer of bureaucracy or another office. Part of it gets resolved a little bit by leadership. Um, you know, it had been a long time since we had solid leadership and accountable leadership yeah. on child protection. That's I get what we it. So, need. So you want, you, you, you want more uh, bravado moments where people stand up and say, this has to be done. Let's pay attention to it. Let's, right. let's be more vocal and outspoken. Let's protect the kids. I mean, the fact that you have almost 500 kids who have died or nearly died in the state since 2008, and we're not talking about this. Yeah. These are kids who are three or younger. Too many of them don't even blow out the candles on a first birthday cake. And we, ha we can prevent it. You oftentimes hear district attorneys come out of a, pro a cr prosecution in a courtroom having prosecuted that person, and they stand there, and they're proud about the fact that they prosecute it. But the first thing they'll say is, this was preventable. Yeah, and we've got to go. get to a point where yep. we are not allowing that many kids in this state, especially that young, to die. All right, you'll let us know and keep us updated over the course Absolutely. of the next the ne next year or so. All right, coming so up, uh, there's, uh, talking about important subjects, education. It leads the uh, governor-elect uh, Tom Wolf's agenda. We're going to talk from... Uh, from a representative of PSEA, get the point of view of that union and, and those educators who are in the classroom teaching the children of this state every day. We'll do that uh, after we pay some bills. We better do that. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania working towards a healthy Pennsylvania, and by the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance, representing companies involved in America's most affordable, reliable energy source. To learn more, visit PACoalAlliance.com. All right, welcome back to the program. We were talking about child abuse and, and uh, obviously an important subject. There's probably no more important subject at the moment, the governor-elect Tom Wolf, than the whole subject of education education spending. He promised to increase education spending, and he wants to use a tax, 5% uh, tax on the extraction of natural gas. It's called a severance tax. It's an issue he campaigned on. Uh, and last week, we heard from the business community. We're now going to hear from the education community. Joining me is Jerry Oleksiak. He's the uh, vice president from PSEA and uh, too many years a special education teacher at the Upper Marion Area School. I can say that, Jerry, as someone who spent 30 years in the classroom. Right, uh, 32, 32, 32 years in the classroom. Well, yeah, we have that in common. Long, long time in, 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 the, in the classroom. But look, I'm, I'm glad you could be on. Let's talk about no more controversial subject than education spending. Let's not revisit the campaign. Right. It's over. Right. What do you think needs to be done to put more money, and here I'm gonna put it this way, into the classroom where the kids get the benefit from it. Do, maybe I'm wrong, do I have that right? Isn't no, that where it should that's, go? That's where it should go, and that's what we're all about. Uh, you know, our members in the classroom every day, and we see what, what happens when we don't have the, the resources that we need. I think if we could wave a magic wand, it, it would be a fair, equitable, mm -hmm. reliable, sustainable, adequate funding formula. Uh, and we did have a funding formula that... Uh, twice. Twice, yes. <laughs> now we're one of the few states that in, in uh, yeah. America that does not have a funding formula. We need to get back to a funding formula. We need to have education funding a, a priority, as it was for, uh, in the campaign and for Governor-elect Wolf. Yeah. Is there a dollar amount or is it just a question? I mean, one of, the, one of the problems is that the governor made the argument about, well, he, he put more money and a lot of it went to pensions. But over the course of the last couple of years, the vast majority of school districts have had furloughs and cutbacks of right. staff and property tax hikes, mm -hmm. uh, all leading to the obvious problems that many school districts have. Is there a dollar amount? I mean, is, is it three, five, seven percent increase, or do you think it just needs to be totally reevaluated? How we 
where we get the money from and how we spend it. What's your sense I, I, about that? I think we do need to, to look at the, the bigger picture overall. We, um, at its height, uh, Pennsylvania was funding public school education throughout the state at close to 50 percent. That's correct. And now it's in the low 30s, yeah. uh, the percentage that comes from the state. That's had to be made up by uh, local property taxes. That's why those, there's the pressure on uh, property tax uh, Reform, you know, payers, yeah. and that's why there's there, we're, people are, are looking at that. Yeah, the let, federal let me government stop doesn't. You on that. Th sure. th that's a topic that, for 40 years, there's been efforts to try to get property tax reform. In fact, the bills in the legislature that would eliminate it completely. Right. But we're talking about 11 or 12 billion dollars. In other words, we get rid of all the school property tax, 11 billion dollars, right. <laughs> meaning sales and income taxes are yeah, probably. Right. Right. But you make a good point about the shift over the years. Mm -hmm. 50% funding from the state, now, what, a th about a third? About a third. And that means higher property taxes, property taxes, probably the, uh, 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 as someone who does polls, when we ask voters which taxes they take to most, it's the property and tax, right? So it's teachers that are uh, answering that, uh, those poll no, questions no, as well. No, no, it's, it's we, senior citizens, well, lots of folks yeah. on retirement. Yeah, well, and, and our members are paying property tax. I pay property tax, and it, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is an issue, but... Uh, uh, to eliminate property tax would create, I think, uh, the independent fiscal office had a number that yeah. would that was it's 11, outstanding. It's 11 or 12 yeah, right. billion, something in that, that range. Uh, and and that, where, where does that get made up? So we would like to see some reform to, for property tax if we can replace that funding in other ways. You mentioned uh, uh, the extraction um, tax. The, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, corporate taxes that could be looked at, corporate tax breaks that could be looked at. We're part of a coalition called uh, CLEAR, the Coalition of Labor Engaged for Accountable Revenue, and it's the public sector unions. And, uh, you know, we've looked at uh, what can be done to increase revenues mm -hmm. that would help ease some of that property tax burden, would help in um, funding the schools properly a, a better way, right. uh, clearforpa.org. All right, we're, let's uh, take a little break here and we come back. I want to talk about this uh, uh, funding commission that's underway to get Jerry's sense about what elements should go into it in order to be sure that the school districts of the state are treated equally and more fairly. Uh, we'll get into that subject and maybe talk a little bit about school performance and pensions, given the amount of time that we have left. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Business Council and by the Pennsylvania Business Council Education Foundation. We're talking education and, and all aspects of education with Jerry Oleksiak. He's a vice president from uh, PSEA. He's also, uh, I, he reminds me, I have to say, special education teacher from Upper Marion Area School. I'm a longtime teacher, so we're all, we, have, we have that in common, I guess. Look, uh, there's a funding commission that's been going around the state doing hearings. There's no formula now, which means school districts basically get what they got the year before. Right. What elements should be in that, in, in a formula, should it be adopted? Well, we need to look at what districts need. Uh, clearly, the, what uh, they need in Lower Marion or Council <clears throat> Rock in, out in the eastern part of the state is different than what they need in Philadelphia, uh, also yeah. in the eastern part of the state, or Harrisburg or, or York, certainly. So we need to look at what are the needs that the community has? What, what are their special ed needs? What are their e, e, ESL, English as a second language right. needs? Poverty. Poverty. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of factors that go into it. It's not a, a, a simple thing. And uh, we're, we're glad that the uh, uh, commission is out there looking at this. Uh, and we're hoping that something good will yeah. come of it, get back to a funding formula yeah. that will address those needs of the community. Yeah. And just for clarity, that has to be done by the state legislature. It has right. At the moment, they've just been appropriating a sum of money for the schools based on last year's Some of it's based on last year. Right? Some of it's based on 
deals that are made <clears throat> in, in Harrisburg. It wouldn't be the state legislature if we didn't have some deals going on. Right, yeah. and that's not that's really not the way to do it. We nah. really do need a, a, a formula yeah. that's that's we know is going to be there next year and the year after, so districts mm -hmm. can plan for what they have to do. There's no more controversial subject than pensions. Uh, we're heading towards a $50 billion pension debt for the two big pension systems, teachers' pension system, state employees' pension system. Uh, there's two prevailing views about this. One is that we need a kind of 401k style plan or a hybrid plan versus let the reforms that took place a couple of years ago work out. Let's maybe sell bonds to reduce the pension debts, you know, lower interest rates, the same as, I, I think I know where, where you sure are, you where your organization, but, <clears throat> but, but we've, we're, we're letting the folks know both sure, sides, sure. you know, the business community obviously has a different point mm -hmm. of view. We respectfully understand that. And, and what, what do you think ought to be done with it? Well, as, as you referred to Act 120 uh, from 2010, really did reform the pension system. It, it, it's saving billions down the road. Uh, it, 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 a lot of concessions made on the part of uh, educators, and it's not just the teacher's pension plan. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's also the administrators, the cafeteria lady, the oh, bus sure. drivers. Oh, it, sure. It's all public school employees. Uh, so and it, all state employees. And, and the <laughs> other one is the state employees, correct. So uh, those reforms that were made in 2010 will work. They need time. We need to fund the system. Yeah. Uh, I, I like, like to remind people, this is a system that's been around, uh, PCERS has been around, the public school employee retirement system. It's been around about 100 years, yeah. and it survived World War I and World War II Great and the Great Depression, Depression and uh, the yeah. bumps and bruises we've had economically. If it had been funded properly, even during the recession, or prior to the recession, yeah. uh, if, it, if <clears throat> the state hadn't taken a 10-year uh, hiatus from funding it, the, the system would be in much better shape. Yeah. Uh, so we need to let those reforms work. Now, the final point I want to ask you about is it wasn't a big issue during the campaign. I mean, there were lots of stuff. It came up, I think, what Governor-elect Wolf wants to do is to borrow money, float bonds that would reduce the interest rate, sort of like what you would do if you bought a house. Sure. And then 10 years later, you say, well, I can get a lot less interest and pay less monthly. You push the debt out. Is that something? Well, that's that, something that, we would uh, certainly look at. And we have... Uh, people a lot smarter than me and our, that work for PSEA that, that are pension experts, yeah. and that's something we would be happy to talk about. Uh, I do know that the, the options that we've seen uh, to move to a defined contribution plan will not save any money in the short term or the long term, the, the plans that the former governor, yeah. uh, well, they soon didn't to be former move governor. In, in either house of the legislature. They didn't move because they weren't going to save money now or yeah. down the road, yeah. and uh, the legislature uh, saw that. So we, we do need to let that, uh, the reforms work. We do need to fund the system properly. Okay. And um, we need to uh, let, it, let it play out. All right, thanks for coming in. We appreciate your Thank point you. of view. Thank you, I appreciate the time. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, stay well.